I've done a ton of videos about current college football stars as of late, and in today's video, we will be talking about an up and coming star who has a really cool story. The subject of today's video is Wap Fillier, a wide receiver for the Indiana Hoosiers who's actually named after a hamburger. If you love videos like this, please take a quick moment to subscribe to the channel. If you're searching this kind of video, I know you love college football, so you will not regret clicking that subscribe button. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and you will not want to miss out on any more college football content or stories like this, so make sure you turn on post notifications. And now let's get started with the cool story of Wap Fillier. Wap Fillier already has one of the weirdest names in college football, but you won't believe how that nickname came to be and what his real name actually is. His birth name is Mr. Elias D'Angelo Fillier, but everyone just calls him Wap. When he was growing up in the town of Plant, Florida, his father always took him to Burger King when he was a kid, and he could never remember what the number one meal was on the menu. His dad always said it was the Whopper, and he began to call him Wop, and the nickname stuck. At first, only his family called him that, but then his friends did, and Mr. Elias D'Angelo simply became Wop. Not only did he now have a cool nickname, but he was now becoming a big time player once he got to Plant High School. He was always super talented, but his natural ability was only going to take him so far. His coach said that he was always on autopilot on the field, and he knew that Wop was never going to make it big unless he put in the work. After practice one day, he pulled Wop aside and told him to get in the weight room and that he was not only going to play Power 5 football, but he'd also one day play in the NFL. His coach always kept it real with him, and eventually Wop took his football career into his own hands. There were highs and lows associated with football though, as he had to spend parts of his freshman and sophomore year on the sidelines due to off-the-field issues. He had his fair share of difficult times, but he has leaned on his family, faith, and the game of football to get him through the game of life. Since that the only time he's ever cried is when he was separated from the game of football, which shows just how much he loves the game. Because the game means so much to him, he eventually put it all together and started to ball out on the field. He was under-recruited coming out of high school, but Plant High School had a special connection to a certain Big Ten school. Thomas Allen played for the high school, and he played for his father, the now head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, Tom Allen. They called Bloomington Plant University North because so many kids had gone on to play for them. Wap Fillier eventually committed to Indiana, a school not at all known for football success. Despite killing it at the 7A high school football level, Wap was only a three-star recruit, and everyone who knew Wap knew he was going to make it big time. Indiana football has really struggled over their program's history, and are more well-known for their prestigious basketball program. Wap arrived in Bloomington with a chip on his shoulder, and he was eager to help build a new brand of Indiana football. Former head coach Kevin Wilson was fired for both his on-the-field success and some alleged questionable allegations. Instead of going out and finding a new coach, the Hoosiers decided to promote from within, and they promoted defensive coordinator Tom Allen to the head position. Personally, I absolutely love Tom Allen, and there's not a better man for the Indiana job, and I'm going to do a video on him someday. He immediately began changing the culture of the program, and he knew he had a tough job at his hands. Going into the 2017 season, there really weren't that high of expectations for Indiana or WAP, as the Hoosiers had a new coach, and he was stuck behind Simi Cobbs, Luke Timian, and Ian Thomas in the receiving game. Despite that, the Hoosiers and WAP would get a chance to open up the season on football's biggest stage, as they played Ohio State under the lights for the Thursday night college football season opener. Against all odds, the Hoosiers were actually winning at halftime, and I thought they'd actually have a chance to win. But then the Buckeyes, as usual, turned it on in the second half, and won pretty easily. Unfortunately, Wap did not appear in that game, and he didn't play until their game against Georgia Southern. He had a limited role, but he finally caught his first touchdown in an overtime loss against Michigan. A few weeks later, he showed his full potential as he caught 13 passes for 127 yards and a touchdown against Maryland. From there, the Hoosiers ended up finishing the season 5-7 and seven after they lost to their rival Purdue in a battle for bowl eligibility. Wap caught 33 passes for 335 yards and 3 touchdowns, and had a really solid year for a true freshman. Going into his sophomore year, Timian and Cobbs were now gone, and Wap was expected to take a huge leap in his second year. He started out with mediocre performances against Ball State and Florida International, but he finally had another breakout game to prove he was legit. Against Michigan State, he caught 13 passes for 148 yards and a touchdown, but the Hoosiers lost in close fashion. He suffered a high ankle sprain against Minnesota, and he ended up missing the entirety of the season because of it. The Hoosiers ended up going 5-7 once again, and lost to Purdue for a second straight year in a battle for bowl eligibility. On the year, Wap caught 23 passes for 235 yards and one touchdown. Nothing spectacular, but if not for the injury, he would probably have had a bigger year. As a junior, both Fillier and the Hoosiers were going under the radar, as they were both heading into year 3 of their new eras. I personally thought they would be a bowl team, but many others did not. They began the season 2-0, with wins over Ball State and Eastern Illinois, and he caught 10 passes combined. He struggled in their blowout loss to Ohio State, but he bounced back and caught his first touchdown of the season against UConn. 
In their next game against Michigan State, he caught a career-high 14 passes for 142 yards and two touchdowns. He once again broke out, and this time, he was here to stay. He then caught 10 passes for a new career-high 182 yards the following week against Rutgers, and then caught 14 passes for 178 yards against Nebraska. At this point, Indiana was defying the odds and began the season 6-2. They were bowl eligible in early November, and no one would ever thought they could say that. They finished the year with wins over Northwestern and a double overtime thriller against Purdue, but they lost to both Penn State and Michigan to finish this regular season at 8-4. Watt played in every game except the Michigan one, and he helped lead the Hoosiers to the Gator Bowl against Tennessee. For a while, Indiana was comfortably winning that game, but the Vols used their late season magic and made a comeback to win 23-22. It was a tough loss for Indiana, but Watt had a terrific season as he caught 69 passes for 1,001 yards and 5 touchdowns. He helped lead Indiana to new heights, and he became the team's best weapon and he became the team's best weapon and probably could have left for the 2020 NFL Draft. He ended up deciding to return for his senior year, and he's expected to have a huge final campaign. If college football happens this fall, I fully expect him to have a huge year, and I think he could potentially be one of the best wide receivers in college football. Most draft boards have him as a day two or three draft pick right now, but that could all change with one big year. I'm excited to watch him, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you like WAP failure, or you think he has a cool name, be sure to smash that like button, and if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, and help me reach 2.8k subscribers by the end of July. While you're still here, check out these other videos about college football stars, and also check out my latest upload. Until next time though, peace.